Hey what's up you guys, today I have decided that I'm going to participate in the, what is it, Around the World in 52 Books, I think that's what it's called. I saw a couple of other people's TBRs for this a long time ago, like back in January, but I wasn't sure if I was going to participate, but now I've decided that I want to, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm going to show you the first 13 books in the, like, whole TBR that I'm going to be doing because I don't want it to be too long and I also haven't decided what the books are going to be after this. A lot of these I have already accomplished so yeah I'm just going to tell you which ones I've already done and then which ones I still need to do and blah blah. blah. There's a couple of books that I'm not sure about so if you guys could help me out and give me some suggestions on books that I could read for those numbers definitely let me know. I have them all here on my computer so let's get started. Number one is a book that you meant to read in 2015, but you didn't. And for me, I wanted to finish the Artemis Fowl series in 2015, but I didn't end up doing it. So I've already read The Atlantis Complex, which is the seventh book in the series. Now I just have the last one left, but I did mean to read this book in 2015. It's about a boy who finds out that fairies are real and then uses the fairies and centaurs and stuff to accomplish his own goals. It's a middle grade fantasy series that I have really been enjoying. I didn't too much care for this one as much, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to finish this series. Number two is a book that's set in a different continent than yours, and I'm pretty sure The Wicked and the Divine is set in the UK. I think they're all in England or something like that. So yeah, this is definitely not on my continent, and I love the series. So I read volume two, and I think I read volume three, so those would both count. Number three is a book from the 2015 Goodreads Choice Awards, and I was gonna use The Berry Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro, but I ended up DNFing this one because I hated it, so I don't know if that really counts. So I also chose A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. This is also set in London, so that's not on my continent either. So that would have worked for that one as well, but this one's about a guy who can travel between, what, four parallel Londons or something like that? It's red, black, white, and gray, I think. But I've heard amazing things about it, but I've also heard some other not so amazing things about it. So it'll be interesting to see where I fall. I think this is a winner. I think this won. I'm not exactly sure. But number four is a book by an author that you started reading or hadn't read until 2015. And I chose The Glass Gauntlet by Carter Roy for this. I read the first book in this series, which is called The Blood Guard. It's about a boy who finds out that his mother is a part of what's called The Blood Guard. And they are in charge of protecting, I can't remember the exact number. There's a certain number of pure souls in the world and they have to protect them. If one of them dies of an unnatural death, the world kind of goes into disarray and natural disasters start happening, which I thought was pretty interesting. This one mm, wasn't as good as the first one, I don't think, this, but yeah, that, that completed that one. Number five is a book with a title beginning with the first letter of your name, and so my name is Connor, so C would be the, the ticket for that, and I chose Chasing Forgiveness by Neil Shusterman. This is about a boy who, who's having to come to terms with the fact that his father is being released from prison after he has murdered his mother so <laughs> a little bit heavy but it's pretty short it was really fun not fun i guess would not be the right word very interesting i guess would be the correct word and i ended up really enjoying this one so yep <laughs> check number six is the highest rated on your tbr and for me that book is rated 4.7 and that is the hidden oracle by rick riordan which can we just say i get annoyed at the people that rate books before they come out if they haven't actually read them like i doubt all of these people that are rating this book five stars have actually read the Hidden Oracle. If they have, I'm jealous, but I don't think that they have. So I'm pretty excited for that one. That's a book where Apollo is turned back into a child and has to just kind of go through an adventure, try to get his godly form back. So very excited for that one. I think that comes out in May or something like that. Number seven is going to be a book about books. And for this one, I chose where, how do I hold this? The End of Mr. Y by Scarlett Thomas. I actually won this in a giveaway from the Book Jazz. I'll leave a link to her channel down below. Like, <laughs> years ago and I never ended up reading it. Uh, I started it. I got, oh my gosh, I got a hundred pages in. I can't believe I stopped reading it. I guess I just wasn't feeling it at the time and I think it was a little bit more mature for my reading taste like three years ago when I, when I got the book. But I'm going to start this book again and read it all the way through this time. I actually remember everything that happens in the first 100 pages. So I might just start from where I left my bookmark. It's about a girl who is writing a paper. Or I think she's like a journalist or something. I'm not exactly sure on that. It might be a dissertation. I don't know. But she's writing it on her favorite author. And she's read every book except for The End of Mr. Y, which she finds in a bookstore. And the kicker is that everybody who reads the book dies so she finds the book and then starts reading it and then i think she kind of goes on an adventure i'm not exactly sure but this is a 
an adult fiction book and I'm very excited to actually read it this time. Number eight is one that I need help with and that is a classic that is under 200 pages. I have no idea what book I want to read for this. I can't really think of classics that are under 200 pages. I've already read The Time Machine by H.G. Wells which is definitely under 200 pages but I can't really think of one other than that. So if you have any suggestions for books that you think I would like that are classics under 200 pages please leave those down in the comments. I, I'm not sure if Call of the Wild is under 200 pages but that's one that I've been interested in reading I'm I'm gonna have to look that up later but I I don't know that's the only classic that I can think of right now that I actually have like a desire to read but yeah help me out with that one I need it. Number nine is a book that was mentioned in a, another book. Ever this one, I kind of cheated a little bit. I chose an author that is mentioned in another book. If you guys don't know, Brandon Sanderson wrote a middle grade series called the Alcatraz series, and one of the characters, the grandfather, uses authors' names as curse words. So he'll say like "gambling gamins" or something like that. Which I am planning on reading more gaming this year. I have; they're all right here. <laughs> but for this one, I ended up choosing uh, Scott Westfeld, which is mentioned in the third book of the series, which is called the Knights of Crystallia. The first book in the series is called Alcatraz vs. the Evil Librarians. And so for Scott Westerfeld, I still need to read Leviathan. This is a steampunk young adult novel that has illustrations in it. So I'm pretty excited to get to this one and see what it's all about. I also have extras by him, but for some reason, I just like have no desire to read that book. It's the fourth book. The fourth... Yikes. Fourth book in the Uglies series, but it's not really a part of the series like the series concluded in book three so I don't know why I just like I'm having a really hard time picking it up and every time I mention it in a video people are like oh yeah that book sucked so yeah you guys are not helping me out getting motivation to read that one but I'm pretty excited to read this one number 10 is a book by an author that you think that you should have read by now or you feel that you should have read by now and for me that is Isaac Asimov which is a hugely popular science fiction author and so I have the foundation trilogy in this bind up uh, the Barnes and Noble edition and so I, I don't think each book is that long actually so I'm pretty excited I think I'm gonna read the foundation I don't know within the cu next couple of months so that one should be completed pretty early on but I definitely should have read something by him already number 11 is a book from the Gilmore Girls challenge or something like that I never watched Gilmore Girls all I know is about it's like a mother and a daughter living life and I think they're sarcastic and stuff I guess the daughter is a huge reader and she reads like a different book in every single episode or something like that so I went on the list on Goodreads and I went through them and I decided I was gonna read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland I actually haven't read it yet I think Alice's Adventures in Wonderland might be under 200 pages as well but I don't want to like double up on stuff I want to read a, a singular book for each one I've never read it before and I feel like I should have by now number 12 is a childhood classic and for this one I chose The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein Stein not exactly sure. I read this book already because it's only like 60 pages and I got it for my birthday from Kayla from Book of Doodles. I love The Giving Tree. <laughs> this book is so good. I'm not 100% sure that this is considered a classic, but it is to me because I read it so many times as a child. So this one's going to count for that one. <laughs> yeah. And number 13 and the last number that I'm going to be talking about in this challenge video is Reader's Choice, which is basically pick any book and I've already done that. <laughs> I've read what 60 books this year so far so I think I'm set on that number because I don't think I'm gonna be picking all of those 60 books for the 52 books challenge like I obviously haven't read some of these things already so any of those books that doesn't fall into one of these categories is gonna fit that one so I don't really feel like I need to pick a specific book for that. So those are the first 13 things that I'm going to be doing for the Around the World of 52 Books Challenge. Let me know down in the comments if you guys are participating in that or if you have any recommendations for that classic that's under 200 pages. I would love to hear them. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know if you'd like to see the rest of the books that I'm going to be reading for this challenge and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!